بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده وصلى الله وسلم على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My brothers, my sisters in this beautiful city of Jakarta, I'm really excited to be here with you this afternoon. Alhamdulillah. My brothers and sisters, it's important for us to know that the connection we have with one another would never have been there if we were not connected with Allah. You know me only because we both know Allah. There is no other reason why we know each other. Do you agree? Yes. Say Alhamdulillah. Because to know one another for the sake of Allah and to love each other for the sake of Allah, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, clearly says those people will get a special place on the day of judgment. Rajulani tahabba fillahi, ijtama'a alayhi wa tafarraqa alayhi. Two people who love each other for the sake of Allah. They came together for Allah, they departed for Allah. Those they deserve the shade on the day of judgment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we thank Allah. I always sit and, and think about the gifts of Allah and the favors upon us. What is the biggest gift you have? Is it not Iman? The fact that I worship the one who made me alone. Only he who made me. I believe and you believe. The only one worthy of worship is the one who made me. The fact that I arrived at that conclusion by the blessing of Allah and I was guided to it is the biggest favor you have. So never render acts of worship to anyone besides Allah because the shahada that you and I say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, it would mean I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger and his prophet. Subhanallah. So every day, so many times a day, if you pray five times a day, only the farad, minimum 17 times, you read Surah Al Fatiha. Surah Al Fatiha, the opening surah of the Quran. <laughs> Guide us to the straight path. You are praying, you are asking. That dua, it's a supplication. It is the most repeated supplication ever. Why? Because billions of people repeat it 17 times minimum every day. And we read Surah Al Fatiha more than that. Right? So the most repeated prayer in existence or ever is guide us to the straight path. It means guidance is the most important thing. Now, when we are connected to Allah, we begin to fulfill the rights of Allah. So I will worship Allah. I will adopt what he says. I will try to understand what is halal, what is haram, what he wants, what he does not want. I will adopt it. I'm going to be trying my best knowing I'm going to go back to Allah. When someone passes away or something disastrous happens, we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We belong to Allah and we are going to go back to Him. That statement should make it easy for us to overcome the loss by reminding ourselves that the loss is temporary, but Allah is eternal. And Allah, we are going to all meet again when we go back to Him. Today, for example, I want to meet you. I want to meet every one of you, including all the people. I cannot do it because I'm a human and the time is limited. But I know if Allah takes us to Jannah, we can do it. If Allah takes us to Jannah, we can do it because time is unlimited. Time will be no more, no more time. So that is the favor of Allah. We say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un to remind us that this world is temporary. We belong to Allah, we're going to go back to Him. And as we connect more and more with Allah Almighty, we realize something. When you make a mistake, you turn to Allah. Immediately, oh Allah, forgive me, I'm wrong. I know what you said is right and wrong. If I ask you here, I think the majority of us must be Muslim. And welcome to those who, are, who may not be Muslim, who are in our midst here, you are more than welcome. I tell you something, when we as Muslims are told, do you know what is halal and haram? 90% of it or more, we already know. Do you agree? 
If I tell you what is your duty as a Muslim, 90% of the time we would know 90% of the duties. Some deeper details we might need to find out a bit from the, those who are in, uh, of knowledge. But the basics you know and I know. Halal haram. If I tell you alcohol, halal haram? Haram. Pork, halal haram? Water, halal haram? Thank you. You see, we know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. garam, halal haram? Haram. Ah. Ah, ah, mashallah, mashallah, yeah, mashallah, I see. <laughs> Indonesia, there's a problem. <laughs> huh? They say big masala, two masala, here, big masala, machet, big masala. And second masala, gudang garam, Ma <laughs> mashallah. May Allah bless you guys. Wallahi, I tell you something very interesting. When I was young, I was living in Medina Munawwara. I used to help volunteer to the Hajj. I mentioned this yesterday in my talk. Help the Hujjaj and help the people and so on. And uh, that time, now it's a bit better I think, but that time, uh, 1992, 93, 94 and so on, uh, we used to be immediately, immediately we used to know where the Indonesians are. Even if my eyes are closed, I'm walking, the building, I say, here there is Indonesians. I say, how do you know? I say, because I can smell gudangaram. <laughs> it's the cigarette. Special. It's special from this country, right? Yes, mashallah. May Allah bless. May Allah forgive. Inshallah, it's a bad habit. We should quit it. No matter how, how garam the gudang might be. <laughs> but, but it's a bad habit. In the same way, any bad habits, we quit them for the sake of Allah. If you can quit one for Allah, Allah will give you Jannatul Firdaus. If you can quit something for Allah, Allah will grant you Jannah. Look, I tell you something. Allah Almighty has granted Jannah to those who have quenched the thirst of a dog for the sake of Allah. Allah gave them Jannah. When they felt compassion, when they felt their hearts were soft, what is my connection with a dog? Let me tell you what is my connection with a dog. Number one, can we eat dog halal or haram? Haram, right? You cannot eat. But my connection with the dog is the one who made me, he also made the dog. Subhanallah. You see, so I need to be kind. Pig, for example, we don't eat, but I cannot harm the pig because pig has life. Some people, Muslims, they think because it's a pig, I can throw stones, I can do anything, I can hurt it, that's a pig. No way. Allah will punish you if you hurt anything that has a soul unnecessarily. When I say unnecessarily, I mean if you want to consume something that is halal, you need to follow a certain method of making it halal. But to harm any animals or birds or even the fish or the oceans or the, the trees or the ecosystem and to create pollution unnecessarily and so on, Allah will hold you accountable. This earth is not only yours, it belongs to me and you in the same way. All of us were born here on earth. You are entitled to live just like I am. You are the same as me. What makes you close to Allah is something called taqwa. Ya ayyuha nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu inna akramakum indallahi atqakum Surah Al-Hujurat, Allah says, O oh man, we have created you from a single male and female. And from them, we have caused you to obviously become multiplied in tribes and communities and nations and peoples, etc., etc. Allah says, the most honored from amongst you, the most honorable, the closest to Allah, the one who has taqwa, is conscious of Allah, he will be the most honorable. You have a status. And when you are close to Allah, you do not think that I am better than everyone else because that's from the devil. What was shaitan's first deviation? You know what it was? When he saw Adam and Allah created Adam and shaitan saw Adam, he wanted to find an excuse not to obey Allah's instruction. He said, Ana minhu. I am better than him. Why should I prostrate here? I am better than him. Up 
to today, that better than him is a problem with all of us. It's a problem with all of us. When you think I am better, that is the very moment shaitan is holding you and massage, massage nicely. You are better, you are better. You are the king, you are smart. Everyone else, nothing, right? May Allah forgive us. A'udhu billahi sami'i al-alimi min shaitan al-rajim. May Allah Almighty grant us refuge in him against shaitan the accursed. Amen. So as you grow in your connection with Allah, you need to do what Allah wants. One of the things that Allah wants is that you understand who he is. Who is Allah? He is the maker, the creator, the nourisher, the cherisher, the sustainer, the provider, the protector, the curer, the one in whose hands lies absolute control of every aspect of existence. That is Allah. Who Allah? Who Allah? And he is not the creator of me only. Everything I will ever see in my life, Allah created it. Even the things I may not have seen, if they exist, Allah created it. So who am I? I am one small human being that most of the world does not even know. But I can be very close to Allah if I understand whatever Allah made. If I love Allah so much, if I love Allah so much, Anything that he created, I need to understand what he wants me to do with that thing or how he wants me to interact with that thing. So let's start off with human beings, okay? Human beings. Human beings are just like me, same species. One day there was a man, he was sitting with me on an aircraft. He told me, do you believe in evolution? I told him, what's that? Trust me, even he did not know. <laughs> he didn't know. He told me, we are from apes. I said, I'm from Adam. Maybe you're from the ape. <laughs> huh? I am from Adam. Maybe you're from the ape. Subhanallah. So he said, no, no, no. We are from apes. I said, so why are there still apes on earth? It's a question. And why the apes on earth are not changing to man? By now, should be no more apes. Anyway, that discussion ended in a nice way, in a very beautiful way. And what we agreed is we have to also respect those apes. Not because they are his grandfathers, but, <laughs> but because it's a creation of Allah. Human beings, we are part of one family. Human beings are part of one family, no matter what. There are so many connections between you and me, right? The first original connection is the fact that you are the children of Adam. Now this would include Muslim, non-Muslim, no matter where you are, no matter how you think, how close or far you are from Allah, the sinful, the not so sinful, those who are very sinful, all of those, no matter who you are, I have to acknowledge we are from Adam and we are created by Allah from the dust, the soil and so on. And Hawa is our mother and so on. I have to agree. So there is a connection. If there is a connection, even if I do not like what you are doing or even if I disagree with you I need to offer you minimum respect because if I'm a Muslim for example I have discovered Allah and I worship my maker alone I need to love that goodness for everyone else and I will not be able to communicate that goodness with other people if I don't have a connection or any respect between me and them how can I convey the message I have, if I have no respect for anyone, no, my brother, carry yourself with respect, continue. If you disagree, you disagree. I can disagree with you very strongly. Like this brother who was telling me about apes. I disagree very strongly, but we made a joke about it. We laughed and he started to laugh and so on. I told him, I see this and it went on quite a bit. But end of the day, I managed to get my word in. You understand what I'm saying? Why? Because we respect. I didn't say, oh, you know, no swearing, no abuse, no matter who they are. A believer does not say swear words with his or her mouth. A believer does not utter falsehoods, does not hurt people. Intentionally, you are swearing, abusing. You are not allowed to do it even with those who are far away. Allah says, وَلَا تَسُبُّ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ 
فَيَسُبُّ اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ Don't mock at or joke about or abuse those who are worshipping deities and gods besides Allah because then they will also have a reaction and they will start to abuse and mock and joke about Allah without knowledge. Subhanallah Rabbil Alameen. Who caused it? The one who started it. If someone, like there is another hadith, that you should not swear your parents. So someone said, how would we swear our parents? He said, you know what? You see someone, you swear his parents, and then he swears your parents. What happened? You are the one who started it. If you say this, if you tell someone, for example, you are stupid, they will tell you, you are stupid. Agreed? That's how it works. So Allah says, don't even do that. You are not allowed to abuse people. You are a believer. You have a connection with everyone here. Respect them. They are the creatures of Allah. Allah made them and Allah allowed them to meet you in your life so that he is testing you. Whoever you meet, whoever you interact with, whoever you heard, whoever you saw, it was chosen perfectly and carefully by Allah for your test on earth. It's not just a coincidence. For you may be coincidence, for me may be coincidence, we are human. For Allah, nothing is coincidence. You are sitting in front of me, designed by Allah a long time back. A long time back. Before you knew me and before I knew you. Allah knew. One day you are going to sit here. What's my duty? I love you. I respect you. I honor you. I will give you the best of what I can for the sake of Allah. That's it. It's my test. When I go back to meet with Allah, did you meet them? Yes, we did. What happened? We tried to do good things. We remind each other about you. What will Allah say? I hope he will say for you guys, all of you just go to Jannah. I mean, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. I mean, that's what we want. So my brothers and sisters, as we are connecting with people, we begin to connect more and more with Allah. When you know Allah and you love Allah, anything that Allah loves is beloved to you. Anything that Allah made, you will be kind and respectful even if you disagree. Why do I say disagree? Sometimes we hate certain things. We hate, what do we hate? We hate sins. We hate kufr. Those who perhaps blaspheme against Allah and his messenger, we hate the deed. As for the person, there are stages. In the early stage, we will still try with the person. We still continue. You made a mistake, you made a sin. Look, if you had to hate everyone who sinned, you would have to hate yourself. You follow what I'm saying? If you had to hate everyone who sinned, you have to start off by hating yourself. Look in the mirror and say, I hate you. Why? You committed a sin. That itself shows you that initial teaching of Islam is that you hate the sin. As for the sinner, they fall into many categories. The initial category, you cannot just hate the sinner. In the initial category, you correct them, you guide them, they will come and so on. Sometimes they are sinful and you know they are passive sinners. The only time that changes is when they become promoters of the sin. They are harming you. They are oppressing you. They want to remove you from the goodness you have and take you to the sin they are committing. Then you say, you know what? I hate this guy. Subhanallah. It's a bit heavy. It's a bit strong. But that is the final, ut utmost level. I'm going to stay away. But I still pray for them. And I will still continue to have hope for them. But there comes a level where, say for example, a man, may Allah forgive us, I'm going to give you a real example. A man who killed your child or who killed a family member of yours. You can't say, I love you, my brother, but I hate what you did. Oh, come on. You are a human. You also have feelings. You love me. Okay, let me kill someone else. You might love me more. <laughs> huh? No chance. You have the right to say, I hate this man. He killed my child. Don't you have a right to say that? You have a right. So if someone is killing your deen completely, you have the same right. But go easy, go easy. Why? Allah says, عَسَى اللَّهُ أَن يَجْعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ عَادَيْتُمْ مِنْهُمْ مَوَدَّهُ وَاللَّهُ قَدِيرُ Allah is all able and capable to create love between you and those whom you have been fighting. Those whom you dislike, those whom you hate, Allah can create love between you and them. 
How many times you have people who hate each other for some reason? Their children or their grandchildren begin to marry, intermarry. And then what happens? You forget about everything. May Allah Almighty help us. So the point being raised is there is a connection between all human beings. Then there is another connection if the person happens to be in the same circle as you. And how many circles are there? There are so many circles. Sometimes they are in the same family as you. So disbelievers, but they are in your family. Allah says there is a double connection. Why? One is that of human being. Two, they are related to you. Does it mean I'm a Muslim, they are not Muslim, I need to just say Astaghfirullah every time I see them? No. If that was the case, we would become so pious because there are so many non-Muslims on earth, we would be saying Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah all our lives. But in reality, your family, if there is someone in your family who is not a Muslim, your duty is to treat them with utmost respect. Your duty is to behave in a way that they can feel that what you are upon is actually the truth. Yes, it happens so many times. People interact with Muslims here in the Jawa. So many years and centuries ago, they say there were some business people who came with beautiful interactions and honest, upright business dealings. Am I right? Yes. What happened? People started to turn. Hey, these guys, I want to be with them. I want to be from you. I love it. This is amazing. You guys are straightforward. You guys don't drink. You don't do any bad. You don't do this. You don't do that. You are kind. You are generous. You help everyone and so on. Subhanallah, they turn to Allah because of you and your actions. So if there is someone in your family who's not a Muslim, your actions need to be even more exemplary. Your parents, if they're not Muslim, they are your parents. No matter what, you will be kind to them. You will honor them. That's how you connect with Allah. Because you connect with human beings. You connect by serving those around you. You serve them. Don't be selfish. Shaitan is selfish. Subhanallah. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam received revelation, the first words, what was the first word? Iqara. Read. He said, Ma ana biqari. I'm not a reader. Anyway, after that episode, after the initial interaction with Jibril, the angel, he came down to go to see who? Who did he want to meet first? Come on, say the name. Don't be shy. Bole, bole. <laughs> yes. What was her name? Khadija. Khadija bintu Khuwailid. His wife. He came down. Zammiluni. Give me a nice tight hug, right? Cover me, cover me, envelop me. Zammiluni. And what did she, what happened? What happened? He explained what happened. She said, Kalla wallahi la Allahu abadan. There is no chance, I swear by Allah, there is no chance that Allah will let you down. You know why? You are a good man. Subhanallah, you are a good man. Why am I saying this? You and I need to be good men. One is when we go to wife, say, hug me. She say, what for? <laughs> right? Cover me. What for? I have a problem. You are my biggest problem. <laughs> That's what happens. It's true. Because the way we read our lives is far from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Here is the greatest of all, the one we follow, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He comes down and says, Zammiluni, when he explains what happened. She said, Kalla wallahi la yukhzik Allahu abadan. No way. Allah will never let you down. You are a man. You honor the guest. You fulfill your relations. You look after the neighbors. You are upright. You And she rattled out so many good qualities of the man. How many good qualities do you and I have? Can't we do better? Inshallah we can. I promise Allah today that I will do better than where I was yesterday. Let's make the promise. Do you promise Allah you will become a better person than what you were yesterday? And if you continue promising when you by the time you get to the day when you are going to die, you will be the best version of yourself. How many of us we never used to pray today? Allah allowed us to pray. Do you know when you are doing tahajjud, it's by invite only? Do you know that? You know what is invite only? If you do tahajjud before fajr, it's only by invite. Allah invites you to do tahajjud. Otherwise you are sleeping. Allahu Akbar. So when you do tahajjud, first thing, thank Allah. Oh Allah, you invited me here today. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar.
Many of us forget about the Hajjud, even the Fajr is not even there. Who invited you? Shaitan. Let me, I'm asleep. Masad. There is still five snooze, snooze. Okay, khalas. Okay. And then they say, okay, 30 minutes, snooze again, snooze again. Am I right or wrong? I'm a human, I also snooze, snooze. I don't know. <laughs> so understand the favor of Allah. Get up, be strong. Allahu Akbar, it might be my last day. The hadith says, Salli salatam wa da'in. When you fulfill your prayer, fulfill it as though it's the last prayer and then it's gone. Maybe I might not get to pray after this. And do that every day for every prayer. One day, it will be your last prayer. It will. May Allah strengthen us. My brothers and sisters, if you have bad habits, today is the day you're going to throw it out by the will of Allah. If Allah does not soften your heart on a day like this, where so many thousand have gathered here, for example, in order to remember Allah, if Allah did not soften you on a day like this, when do you want to be softened? What are you waiting for? Is there something you are waiting? Some people, they turn to Allah after they have a big loss. You can wait for the loss. Sometimes it might not come. Sometimes people are diagnosed with a disease. May Allah give you shifa. If Allah has tested you with a sickness, today we are asking Allah, Allahumma shfihi, oh Allahumma shfiha. Oh Allah, grant her or him cure. May Allah grant you cure. Don't wait for calamity to strike before you turn to Allah. Because at that time, shaitan might come to you and you might turn away from Allah. There are some people, there is a guy who sent me an email the other day saying, I lost my job. Two years I'm making dua, Allah is rejecting. Now I'm fed up of praying. Hey, how can you say that? How can you say Allah is rejecting? Allah knows he wants to squeeze you to the end. Don't give up prayer. Yusuf alayhi salam, the father, he prayed for how long? He was a Nabi of Allah, Prophet of Allah, Yaqub, Jacob, may peace be upon him. He kept praying for Allah for years and years and years. And what did he say? I'm not going to stop because min ma la ta'lamun. I know from Allah something which you don't know. Allah will give. And even if Allah does not give in this world, He will reward me because I prayed and because I continue to ask. That is Allah. So my brothers and sisters, today is the day. We need to be kind to one another. We need to help one another. We need to reach out to one another. We need to change the way we treat people. Don't be rough. Watch your tongue. Don't hurt people's feelings. When you are rough with your tongue, you pay a price. When you are hurtful to someone, you pay the price. When you have done something wrong to someone else, that is a heavy price you're going to pay. It's worse than when you have committed a sin between you and Allah, because you and Allah, He can forgive you without interference of anyone else. He is Ghafoor, Rahim, Rahman, Wadud, the most kind, the most merciful, the most generous, the most compassionate, the most forgiving, and so on. Those qualities belong to Allah, not to other human beings. So my brothers and sisters, this is the day. I want to tell you, serving humanity is part of serving Allah. If you understand Allah, like I've said earlier, because you respect every creature of His, you begin to serve them. I was in Mecca not long ago, and I was leaving. And I needed to take some zamzam. You know what is zamzam, isn't it? Zamzam is also the name of a girl. By the way, there was someone, I said, what is your name? She says, Sister Zamzam. Subhanallah, I was surprised. You drink water? <laughs> I was waiting to hear, no, I only drink zamzam. Okay. Anyway, the Zamzam I'm talking about is the water from the well of Ibrahim alayhi salam and so on. Uh, Hajar alayhi salam. Uh, well, the story of Ismail and so on. That Zamzam. So we wanted to bring a bit. Now, you know, sometimes you are coming back from Makkah, your luggage and everything. The brother at the counter, he told me, what do you want? I said, the Zamzam. He said, okay, bring it. Let it go. I said, oh, mashallah. I was almost wanting to cry because for me, you know, it's a big thing, man. I told him, brother, I want to share with you one hadith. Now I was emotional. I was what? Emotional. Brother, I want to share with you one hadith and from my heart, something came to me. He said, what is it?
I said, I, I stand in front of him. I stood in front of him and I told him, I said, my brother, in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he told us that there was a man who quenched the thirst of a dog by going down a well and picking dirty water from that well in his own shoe and getting up to quench a dog, some dirty water from the well and Allah gave him forgiveness because of that. And Jannah, I swear by Allah, if you quench a human being's thirst with zam zam, what do you think you are going to get? He also began to cry. But the point is correct. To quench the thirst of a dog with dirty water was already the highest reward. What about to quench the thirst of a human being with the purest water on earth? I don't know what you're going to get, but my question is, what do you think you're going to get? It has to be more than the other one. Agreed? So that is why I say serve human beings. Don't worry. You will, you know, when we go out, we greet someone. Assalamu alaikum. Allah writes it down. It's written. What did you say? Peace be on you. What is that? It's a dua for you. Supplication. I pray that you and your whole life is peaceful. The way you should say wa alaikum as -salam, should be that, ah, that dua, I really need it. At the moment, I have no peace. So many people say, I have no peace. I say, just salam everyone. They say, how? Because you say, Salaamu Alaikum. They say, Wa Alaikum as -salam. If you are genuine and sincere, Allah will give you the peace. That is why the best thing, Allah adullukum ala amrin idha fa'altumuhu tahababtum afshu salama baynakum. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, should I not show you something if you were to do it, then peace will be spreading amongst you. And love will spread amongst you. Love. Tahababa. To love amongst one another. What is it? He says, spread the salam amongst you, genuinely, not fake. You know what's a fake salam? Someone you, comes in front of you, you are jealous of them, you hate them, you dislike them, and so you, you come in and you are shy, so he says, salam alaikum. But in your heart, there is a dagger you want to stab behind them. Ugh! You know, that is hypocrite. You will not go anywhere. That is hypocrisy, nifaq. Don't do that. If you are showing your teeth, make sure they are true teeth. Not just dentures, huh? No, no, even if you have dentures, you can show them, no problem. For as long as a genuine smile, my brother, Salamu Alaikum, how are you? How is everything? Okay. And don't get too involved in personal questions because people do not like personal questions. I say, Salamu Alaikum, how are you, brother? I'm fine. How much do you weigh? <laughs> Me? Weigh? What's it got to do with you? Subhanallah. Okay, what's your salary? Where do you work? Oh, you work in that store. Uh, that small perfume bottle, how much is it? My brother, I, don't even say salam alaikum. Leave me alone and go that side there. <laughs> That's why I say we are Muslims. We are beautiful people. You need to know where to stop and what to do. Don't expect extra favors from people. Expect a favor from Allah. Allah will favor you. Make people's lives simple and easy. And Allah will grant you and bless you. Salamu alaikum, mashallah. What other duties you have that you can connect to Allah through serving humanity? When someone is sick and ill, pray for them, visit them, go to see them if you can, or at least send them a message. I am praying for you. May Allah give you shifa and so on. Again, when people are sick and ill, depending on how close they are to you, number one. Number two is how sick they are. Because sometimes you say, you go to the sick person's house, knock, 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 but he wants to sleep. No, I'm here. Ziyaratul Marid, Iyadatul Marid. I need to visit the sick. Now the man is sleeping. No, wake him up. I need, I'm coming to visit. Sunnah, Sunnah. What is the Sunnah? Then you go in and you sit. You say, right, bring the tea, bring this, this. My brother, did you go for Sunnah or you went to have a mini breakfast there? Huh? It's amazing. Then people sit for two, three hours. My man, from long outside, they're saying, when is he going? When is he going? And you don't even know. Or you know, but you don't mind. Astaghfirullah. So that's why you need to know some people, one message is enough. It's called Iyadatul Marid. No problem. Sometimes one phone call is enough. Sometimes you send a message through someone else. We are praying for you. It's enough. Sometimes you can visit quickly and you can go. If you are very close to the person, you can go. Sometimes they want you. Please come to see, come sit down with me. I need to talk. Go. Alhamdulillah. So for everything, you need to know how much, where, when, and how. What else? If someone passes away, you make the janazah on them. If someone passes away, you try to follow the janazah to the grave and you help to bury them. 
the women might not be able to go all the way because the men are the ones who actually carry the janazah and into the grave and so on. But you pray for them and you make dua for them and you can visit those whom they have left behind in terms of family and friends and you can give them some condolence and sympathy and dua. That is part of your duty as a Muslim. To be sad at the sadness of other people is your duty as a Muslim to connect with humanity in order to connect with Allah. To be happy at the happiness of someone else is also part of your duty to connect with humanity in order to be able to connect with Allah. If you are sad when someone is happy, there is something wrong with you. And if you are happy when someone is sad, there is something wrong with you. Subhanallah. I remember some time back, there was a man, he was, he was troublesome in the sense that he has done a lot of hurtful things to a lot of people, but he passed away. And when he passed away, the news spread. So I'm on one WhatsApp group and the news spread, so and so passed away. Four or five people, they said, Alhamdulillah. And I said, imagine, if I die, do I want people to say Alhamdulillah? I corrected them. I said, no brothers, don't say no matter what. This is the point where you say, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Allah says to us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when someone has passed away, say good things about them. It's over. The game is over. You know, if they lost 7-0, they lost. Allah, say it once and leave it. It's over. You know, those of you who are, those of you who are in football, I know what you are thinking. Eh? <laughs> I didn't realize even Indonesia is interested. Eh? Actually, the whole world is interested in football, right? So you mention it once and it's over. You don't have to keep after the game is over. Your whole life you are mentioning 7-0, 7-0, you know. You don't have to say that. Allah grant us ease. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, the amazing thing is Allah loves those who serve and who help and who love one another for His sake and His pleasure. You know, I tell you something very powerful, very powerful. When you do good to other people, why are you doing the good? Ask yourself. That's a very powerful question. If I am kind to you, I see you and I'm very kind to you and very, very, you know, helpful and so on. Why am I doing it? Ask yourself. I swear by Allah, if you are doing it for the sake of Allah, you will not mind whether they are good to you in return or not because you are not doing good to them because you think they deserve the goodness, but rather you are doing good to them because you know that Allah loves those who do good. No matter who they are doing it to. I am kind to you, not because I even know you. I don't even know you in that sense. I am kind to you because I know Allah loves those who are kind. I am, I am good to you because I know Allah loves those who are good. I am not good to you because I think you deserve good. If I am good to you because of your deserving, we would never be good to one another. Because shaitan would always come to us and make us think, why are you good to this person? They don't deserve to be good. That's why the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did good to those who did bad to him. He was still good to them. That's on another level altogether. But he taught that to us. Sometimes we are so weak, we cannot. Imagine someone does bad to you. How are you going to do good to them? It's not easy. But if you're a believer, you can. May Allah Almighty strengthen us. So my brothers and sisters, we are to fulfill the rights of one another and beyond we can do extra goodness. You see, if you look at the surah in the Quran, which is very powerful, one of my favorite surahs. وَالضُّحَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَىٰ وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَىٰ Amazing. I want you to go back this evening and read the meaning of this surah. I want you to go back and read the meaning of this surah and the next one, Surah Al-Sharh. This is Duha and the next one is Sharh. Please go back today on your phone. You can find on Google or wherever you, if you have an app or whatever, you will find it. Read the meaning of the surah because Allah is explaining and telling us that He will definitely give. He's telling Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your hereafter is going to be better than this life. And don't think that Allah forsakes you just because the goodness you wanted did not come to you. Very interesting. 
Do not think that Allah has abandoned you because the goodness you were expecting did not come to you. Don't think Allah left you. He did not leave you and he will not leave you. You come to Allah, Allah will come to you even more. You walk to Allah, Allah rushes to you. In that surah, Allah Almighty says towards the end, I'm sure you know the verse. Most of us know it, right? Do we know it? Come on, come on, come on. I used to see one program long back. I don't know if it still exists. There was a friend of mine who was managing this. It was called Chinta Quran. And first time I heard the meaning of the, the word Chinta. It means La. I said, Chinta Allah, Chinta Rasul, Chinta Quran, Muslim. I'm a Muslim, right? May Allah grant us goodness. As for the one who is asking. Who is the one asking? The beggar. Allah is, Allah is guiding you about the beggar who you come across. Allah says, when you come across a beggar, a masail, the beggar, the one who comes to you and he asks, now Allah is telling you how to treat him, how to treat the beggar. What did Allah say? Look at how powerful it is. Allah knows every one of us is on a different level, right? Number one. Number two, Allah knows that all the beggars are not the same. Some of them are legit. Some of them are a scam. We agree. Some of them, you look at them and say, mm, there is a big... Uh, sort of, you know, a network of these people, they are more rich than you. At night, they are driving Bugatti. And in the morning, they are, yeah, it, it can happen. In the daytime, they are standing in the street, one rupiah, one rupiah, one rupiah. Say so only one rupiah, only one rupiah. And you know where you are going to give one rupiah when the rate to the US dollar is almost 14,000. I know, right? <laughs> so you will give them so much more. Ah, they get it from Indonesia. What is the population? 230 million? 235 million? 275? 280? Ooh, it's growing as I'm speaking. Mashallah. 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 It's good. It's good. Alhamdulillah. So it's so beautiful because you might be 280, 300, maybe tomorrow morning will be a little bit different. But it's so beautiful because imagine how big the population is. If you do goodness, even one rupiah, if everyone had to give one rupiah and half the population or a quarter or a third had to give, you would make a hundred million rupiah in a minute. I'm just giving an example. So some beggars, they know a well, big population. Let's go. Let's do it for you as a human being. You it's hard to tell. You have to use your own discretion while you want to help those who are in need. You also do not want to promote scammers. So now it's very difficult because I see someone and to me, he looks normal. Maybe I don't want to give him. Maybe I want to give him in Islam. If you feel like you do not want to give, you do not have to give. If there is a doubt in your heart that this man might use this for drugs or whatever else, or he doesn't need it, or he's part of a scam or whatever else it may be. It's okay. You don't have to give because Allah says, Wala ta'awanu ala al -ithmi wal -udwan. Don't help people to do something which is sinful or wrong, enmity and so on. Don't. So it's hard. I'm a human. I don't know what to do. It's hard. So Allah did not say, Amma sail. As for the beggar, give him. Allah didn't say that. Did Allah say, as for the beggar, give him? No, he didn't. He only said, La tanhar. Don't rebuke him. Don't abuse him. Don't disrespect him. If you want to give, give respectfully. You don't want to give, don't give respectfully. You know, my father, long back, there was many, many years ago, there was a beggar who used to stand on the road. And in order to just keep him quiet, I said, I looked at him from the window the, and I said, tomorrow. My father said, are you even going to see this guy tomorrow? Why you said tomorrow? Maybe you can just excuse yourself or you can say, maybe next time. But don't lie to say, I'll give you tomorrow. When you know you will not even see him maybe tomorrow.
Don't give a beggar false hope. And worse than that, don't rebuke him, abuse him. Hey, you, you are a crook. Who said? How do you know I'm a crook? I know you are part of a scam. Today, Sheikh was, was telling us in the speech that there's many scam. Come on, come on. You're using my name also to do that. <laughs> so we need to respect everyone, even those whom we are doubting sometimes. Give off a respect. Allah says, you know what? Your duty is to ensure that you did not do something wrong. Even if they are doing something wrong, their wrong is against them. Your right will be for you. Allah says, وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرُ Now my point is, if Allah is telling you that as for the beggar, the most important thing you can give him is dignity and respect. Tell me. Dignity and respect is one of the most important things you can give any human being, including your spouse, your children, your parents, your in-laws, and whoever else it may be. Today, we have lost that respect amongst each other. We don't respect. So even if you treat me like how Allah tells you to treat a beggar, we would solve the problem. You see? We would solve the problem. Look at how beautiful Allah words it. Allah says, you know what? It could have been you. It could have been you, right? Things can change. So imagine it was you and someone rebukes you. They swear you. And so you can leave your, you don't need to look in that direction. I do it sometimes. People are knocking the window. Don't even look. Just keep on. Oh Allah, help this person. Carry on. And if you are feeling, there are some people you feel for them. You might talk to them. They look like, okay, this person looks decent. You might be making a mistake. But if you made a genuine mistake, Allah will reward you. Don't worry. Allah will reward you because you tried. So my brothers and sisters, your duty is to reach out to people. Do you know amongst us, there are widows. There are widows. These widows, they are VIPs in the eyes of Allah. Among us, there might be orphans. These orphans are the doors to paradise for anyone who wants to look after them. The Prophet Muhammad says not only a door to paradise, but more than that, they will be with me like these two fingers. If they look after an orphan only for the sake of Allah. Widows and orphans are categories in community. If you were to connect for the sake of Allah and serve them, Allah says you are equivalent to a person who fasts all day, every day, and who stands in prayer all night, every night, in reward. Your reward is equal to the one who does tahajjud and beyond that qiyamul layl and everything throughout the whole night, you are standing in prayer. But in actual fact, you are sleeping. Why? You are looking after widows and orphans. Subhanallah. That is Islam. The Prophet Muhammad says, Ana wa kafilul yatim kahataini fil jannah. Myself and the one who looks after orphans, we will be like this in paradise, two fingers. You know what? He was an orphan. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best of creation, the most noble of all messengers, Allah chose him to be an orphan. That's why I tell my beloved children who are orphans, don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. If you lost your father, it does not mean Allah does not like you. The one whom Allah loved the most, Allah made him go through exactly the same. We follow. And as for the widows, great reward. If you take care of them only for the sake of Allah. The same applies to any category of society and community that is downtrodden in any way whatsoever. You have people who are divorced sometimes. Treat them with respect. Do not abuse them. Look out for them. Try to get them married. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, look at his wives. All of them were previously married besides one. Aisha radiallahu anha. Yet, he was the Nabi of Allah. He was the highest of all. Today someone is divorced, khalas. That is like a sentence, finish. Throw them out and it's over. Your life is gone. That's how some communities look. It should never be like that. These are VIPs in the eyes of Allah. And even if there was a mistake that happened, a mistake does not define you. I always say, my brothers and sisters, Allah does not judge you based on your sin. He judges you based on your repentance. Allah judges you based on your tawbah, on your repentance, no matter what you did in the past. The past is the past. P-A-S-T. It's over. It's gone. It's history. 
It's not now. Right now, if I say, Oh Allah, forgive me. Whatever I done was wrong. I don't want to do it again. I repent to you. I'm your slave. Forgive all my sins. Allah says, you know what? Forgiven. Alas. It's over. Don't lose hope. And then shaitan comes round the corner one more time. You see, shaitan is a devil. Devil. He comes round the corner one more. First, he made you do the sins and he, he kept on making you do sins for many, many years. You did so many very, very bad sins. And then when you one day turn to Allah with a warm tear rolling down your cheeks. Oh Allah, forgive me. I have wronged and so on. And you, are, you feel so good and so nice and happy and you feel clean and calm. And trust me, there is no way that you will not be forgiven if you are sincere. Allah will always forgive you. Even if you go back to him a hundred times, he will forgive you a hundred and one times. Shaitan comes again. What does he, he say? Hey, you remember the sins you committed? Yes. Well, they were so bad, worse than all other people. Okay. Are you sure? Yes. You ask for forgiveness, but Allah won't forgive you, not you. Me? Not forgiven. Yeah, they were bad sins. Look at how shaitan is talking. They were bad. Now you start thinking, maybe Allah did not forgive me. That maybe is a problem. That's shaitan. Allah says, why are you entertaining that waswasa again? Why are you entertaining the devil again? Allah says, don't ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. And you are losing hope in the mercy of Allah. It means you have not recognized Allah. You don't know who is Allah. Does Allah need your ibadah? Does Allah need your obedience? No. Does Allah be affected by your sin? Is Allah affected by your sin? No. You are affected. When you do good, it's for you. Man amila salihan fali nafsihi. Allah makes it clear in the Quran. Waman asa'a fa'alayha. Whoever does good, it's for them, not for me. And whoever does bad, it's against them, not against me. That's why Allah says, ظلموا anfusahum. Those who wrong themselves. Those who wrong themselves because you are wronging yourself. Subhanallah. So remember, do not let shaitan come back to you and make you think I'm not forgiven. Right here, right now, sitting in this beautiful hall in Jakarta, we can actually all be forgiven. You just need to spend a moment. Oh Allah, forgive my shortcomings. The sins I know, the sins I don't know. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, grant me mercy. Oh Allah, I admit my sin. I regret it. I will not do it again. Forgive me and grant me the strength to stay away from it. Amen. Forgiven. Start a new leaf. And see how Allah will open your doors. My brothers and sisters, I didn't realize that I actually spoke for 52 minutes. But inshallah, all in a good course. Next time when I come, I will chop seven minutes from my speech. No, no, inshallah. May Allah bless you all. I pray that the few words I have spoken about can help us to connect with Allah through serving humanity and serving others. There are so many points I could go on and on and on, but let's strike a deal. Can we strike a deal? I will continue this speech, but online, inshallah. Allah bless you. May Allah grant you ease. Inshallah, on, online we continue always. And that's how I think we know each other uh, through technology. May Allah Almighty help us to use technology in a way that we can enter Jannah. Technology is a tool. We must embrace it in the right way. We must use it correctly. And we must protect ourselves from bad use. If we have done something wrong, you can seek the forgiveness of Allah. You can undo what you, are, you have done if possible. And inshallah for us is good hope. I really enjoyed your company today. And like I said, I would have loved to meet you, but humanly it's impossible. So forgive me and excuse me. But in the meantime, even the brothers sitting up there, don't worry, I saw you. I'm just looking around like this and trying to see as much as I can. And wallahi, it's been so beautiful. We, myself and my colleagues, we promised that we will come to uh, Indonesia again. But next time we need a much bigger venue, inshallah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Masha'Allah, luar biasa sekali talks yang diberikan oleh Mufti Meng. Masha'Allah. 
Jazakallah. No, we will have a bit of Q&A. Yes. Right now kita akan punya uh, sesi Q&A dan ini sudah ada yang akan bertanya. Baik, mohon untuk um, apa namanya? untuk partner memberikan mic-nya terlebih dahulu. Sudah? Sudah memegang mic? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, welcome to Jakarta, uh, Dr. Mufti. Um, I have uh, one, one, uh, maybe two questions. Uh, one, okay. one, one. First one, then another one. Okay, okay, okay. It's the following questions. Okay. So the first question is uh, actually my. Uh, I have a disabled uh, son. He actually um, cannot talk, cannot walk. Shafa he Allah just Allah. Um, Allah. he just can uh, laugh uh, or Allah. cry or. Yeah. So uh, what I'm going to ask is, um, I, I I have a talk that um, is there an, um, any way to teach him to pray to connect to Allah? in the right way so um, maybe um, uh, to teach him how to, to do uh, du'a or uh, to do read Quran Takbir Allah. the brother is asking about a child of his who cannot speak and so on and yet his concern is about connecting him with Allah you heard that I want to tell you something my brother Allah Almighty makes things easy Allah says, you have to do the best that you can and leave the rest in the eyes of Allah, in the hands of Allah. I tell you what, these children, they are not mukallaf. In most instances, they perhaps are not even answerable for some things they may do or not do because they don't know, depending on the level that he is upon. You just need to keep trying. And you need to keep trying with him, even if it takes a long time and it does not come to fruition, it's still okay. The reward you get, keep trying, keep making dua. I am not an expert, but the child is your door and your spouse's door to Jannah. If you look after this child, your entry into Jannah will be easier than most of us, if not all of us. And the fact that you are asking about how he can get closer to Allah, that question alone, it made my hair stand because it is a concern that those who have able children do not have at times. They don't care. The child is old, teenage and so on and beyond. They still don't know who is Allah. So my brother, congratulations. Number one, Allah gave you a gift. To look after that gift is not easy. It's like looking after the most expensive diamond in the whole world. Everyone wants to come, everyone wants to steal maybe, everyone wants to harm. You have to look after this diamond with your life. This is your gift. Habibi, I tell you something. I'm not a medical expert and I don't know exactly how to train the child, but you will get the help from whoever is an expert inshallah. As for what I know, Allah will not hold you responsible for more than you can do. So you do as much as you can and inshallah we pray. That Allah give him miraculous recovery. I mean, Allahumma shfihi, Allahumma afihi, Allahumma ya shafi, inna ka anta shafi. La shifa illa shifa uka shifa un la yugadi rusakama, wala summan wala alama. May Allah cure your baby. Barakallah. Allahu akbar. Baik. Karena waktu, kita hanya punya waktu untuk satu pertanyaan lagi. InsyaAllah. Dan seperti tadi, Ranar sudah sempat memberikan mic-nya. Oh belum? Baik. Silakan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, thank you for coming to Indonesia. Um, first question, how can we make ourselves uh, consistent uh, to follow Islamic teaching in our daily life? I mean, it's so hard to uh, be consistent. After coming to this event, I will pray five times a day, stay Inshallah. away from Inshallah. sins. Inshallah. But after a couple of weeks or months, it, it, it where those down. things will fall apart. And second, uh, quick one, uh, do you have any tips on how to overcome the feel of being guilty for your action in the past. You mentioned past is the past, but sometimes it bothers your head. Thank you very much.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Guilt is something that is good when it comes to the bad that you've done. But the fact that you feel the guilt must not make you doubt the fact that you are forgiven by Allah. You are embarrassed. Say for example, the embarrassment of cheating on someone or the embarrassment of doing something bad and then the person says, don't worry, it's over, it's okay. But every time you see them, you're like, gosh, I shouldn't have done that. You know, gosh, I shouldn't have done that. That, that guilty feeling is not because you are doubting the forgiveness, but because you are embarrassed, I shouldn't have. When you know the status of your maker and how big he is and how, how great he is, you feel embarrassed of how as little as I am, I was transgressing against the one who created entire creation. You know, there is something called the James Webb Telescope. Have you heard of it? You go and Google it today. James Webb Telescope. I promise you, check. It's a telescope that, that, is, that is bringing us images from outer space. Do you know there are so many millions and millions of planets which they never ever knew existed. And galaxies that they didn't know existed. Now they are suddenly seeing all of this. It's just mind-boggling and Allah mentions it in the Quran and Allah tells us about Jannah and Allah tells us how the earth is so insignificant as per the rest of his creation and Allah says it the creation of the skies and the earth is far bigger than the creation of man but man doesn't know many men don't know and so on so that feeling of guilt it will come don't worry for as long as it is not a feeling of guilt which makes you doubt the mercy of Allah, it's a good thing. But if it makes you doubt the mercy of Allah, then you have a problem with recognizing who Allah is. That's the second part of what you asked. The first part of it, my brother, when we decide I'm going to pray, I'm going to do the right thing, I'm going to do whatever I have to, I'm going to be the kindest and most amazing human being possible. One of the most powerful gifts you can have is good company your companions, your friends, you need to either encourage them, either you need to encourage your friends, look, we're going to do this together. So prayer time, we all pray. Uh, when you have to go to eat, you make sure there is no, meaning you don't consume anything that is not allowed, etc. When you have to do something, you make sure you do the right thing. When there is something wrong, because you are in good company, you don't even look. I remember one of the youngsters was telling me that, you know, when I'm with good people, even if there is nudity, we don't even look because we are with each other talking so and so. But when you're alone, you're like, mm, you know, looking all the way. And then you justify because the hadith says, you know, the first nadra is not, is, a, is not against you. The guy says, say, what are you doing? Look down. He says, but it's still my first. Come on. So, <laughs> so may Allah forgive us. So good company is a really good thing. Consistency. Secondly, when you have a connection with some masjid near you or some scholar or some in your community and you, you or even online get used to a habit of listening every so often to some speech. I give you one last example. Jumu'ah is Friday. Jumu'ah comes from jama'ah. Jama'ah means to gather. So the importance of gathering in Islam is so much that you are taught you must go for Jumu'ah. Whenever you are called for, for, on, for prayer on a Friday, you rush towards the remembrance of Allah, the reminder, the speech. Dhikrillah here is referring to that, that Jumu'ah, the, the, the khutbah and the salah, you go for it, right? Why? Once a week, you need to listen to a powerful short message to remind you, hey, remember what we agreed, right? So every week, once minimum, listen to a good talk that will remind you again. No, no, no. Improve your situation until a day comes when inshallah, you will automatically be cured of all of that. It's like cough mixture. You cannot have the whole bottle one time. Doctor will say have one spoon every day at the same time. So you have a spoon, cough is less. Have a spoon, cough is less. Another spoon, by the time few days are up, when your course is over, the cough is gone. What happened? You had little by little. But if you drink the whole bottle, you will cough more after a while. That's why when you swing and you have no coping mechanism, people say they're shahada and they come into Islam. If there is no follow up with such beautiful brothers and sisters, they begin to dilly dally. I always say Islam is knowledge based. The more you know, the more you will love it. When you don't know much, you start to doubt it. You don't know because you don't have the answers, but the answers are there. Keep on asking until you receive a satisfactory response. So good company as well as listening and attending maybe online classes. Like I say, you might be a businessman or whoever else. You might not have the time to go, especially in Jakarta where the traffic is so much. You may not be able to go here. Use technology. 
Use technology. Before I came here, they already told me macet. Big masala. So I learned a little bit of bahasa. I said, when I go there, I will just, you know, flex a bit of my bahasa. Allah bless you guys. Barakallahu. Maybe one more, Shaykh? MashaAllah. Jazakallah. Maybe one more. We can have one more. Sisters, they are complaining. We didn't take okay. a sister. Maybe for the sisters. Yeah. Maybe for the sister. <laughs> MashaAllah. So determined to ask. Maaf ya Pak. Assalamualaikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you. My question is um, somewhat said that we shouldn't control Allah with our pray. Means that we shouldn't ask uh, Allah please give me that, give me those, give me these. That means that we control Allah. Uh, in in fact, it's been said too that we must ask even for our shoe tie, right? Even for our shoe tie, we must ask that from Allah. Then I ask your opinion about what that. Is okay. it is it true that we Jazakallah control Allah? Thank, Thank you so Just much. Shukran. Beautiful question. Normally when the sisters are asking questions, I get so worried because they come up with all sorts of questions and you know, it's a good thing, very good thing, but I have to make sure I, that I answer correctly. But this one, mashallah, we have evidence in Quran and Sunnah, so it's easy to answer, mashallah. So Allah Almighty wants you to ask Him. Allah Almighty wants you to ask Him. He makes it very clear. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانٌ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ The verses of fasting in Surah Al-Baqarah, just after that Allah says, When my worshippers ask you about me, I am very near. I respond to everyone who calls out to me when they call out to me. So call out to me, Allah says. Let them call out to me, ask me whatever they want. And let them believe. The hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, It's a hadith that explains how important it is to call out to Allah because you are dependent on Allah. The hadith, the meaning of it, the literal meaning of it is whoever does not call out to Allah, whoever does not ask Allah, Allah is upset with him. You're not asking me. Subhanallah. There will always be things in your life. You will have to call out to Allah for those things, everything and anything. I want you to go through the dua, sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He asked Allah for everything. Oh Allah, guide me. Oh Allah, give me good health, protect me from disease protect me from sickness why did he ask if it was wrong to ask allah it does not mean that you are controlling allah not at all you are just begging him and begging him because begging allah is a part of ibadah a dua huwa al ibadah dua and calling out to allah is actually ibadah because what does it mean if you want something and you are asking someone for that thing it means you believe he has that thing right if I want $40 million and I, I'm going to ask someone who doesn't even have a thousand dollars, please give me 40 million. He'll start laughing. <laughs> I wish I had it. Right? But if I come to you and say, brother, give me 40 million. I know you probably have 400 million. You probably have more. You have something more. So when you say, oh Allah, give me good health. You know he owns health of everyone on earth. Oh Allah, give me this. It is worship. I am the greater, the dua. The more in your heart you are confirming the grandeur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So keep asking. I think it's a misunderstanding to say, don't ask Allah, you will be, or do you know you're controlling him and say, no, no, no. We will ask Allah and we will ask him for anything. If I want to walk from here to there, even if I know I can, I say, oh Allah, make it easy for me to walk from here to there. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Every breath of yours in the hands of Allah. Your heart beats 136,000 times on average. Maybe 
more or less with some people, right? Depending. But on average, I tell you what, every heartbeat is in the hands of your Lord. You ask him, oh Allah, grant me goodness, grant me good health. Let my heart, ask those who don't have good health where they are. May Allah bless you all. I think we, we don't really have much more time for more questions, do we? Yes, we don't. Inshallah, because well, how I worked it is, there were two men and one woman. But I tell you how I understood it. One was a child, and this was a male and a female. So we are fair, inshallah. Barakallah. <laughs> okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. MashaAllah.